Vian da Kiel. Vian da Kiel la conosciamo tutti, parlamentare iracheni. We know her very well. Uh, it's uh, um, an Iraqi MP uh, from the Kurdish Alliance. We've seen her on TV denouncing strongly the situation of the Yazidi um, people and of the other minorities. And we heard it during the opening ceremony. Now the floor is to Fianda Kiel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Today, I'm not going to give a political speech. Uh, many of you heard my voice. Uh, but now I would like to address you as a human being, simply as a human being, not as a politician. I don't have a written speech. I just wanted to speak to you from my heart, to your hearts, telling you while I'm seated here that I'm receiving calls nonstop from people who have been kidnapped who asks uh, ask me to help them for their freedom and I don't know what to do 79 families uh, made of uh, six seven uh, people have been kidnapped and are held hostage in a village close to Mosul and they're asking you for help because they're under siege they're held hostage uh, they're helpless they have uh, uh, to convert to another faith or they're going to be killed. And they're threatened also to sell their wives and uh, women in a sex. So I didn't really want to give a political speech. I wanted to tell you what it is about. Before coming here, I met 35 children coming in, in the age between four and six and uh, the orphans, the lost uh, all their families, nobody of their families survived. They were under shock. They could not understand what was going on around them. The women were raped and sold. The houses were destroyed. And we were wondering why? Why? We're human beings. We're living here in peace. What, what, what is happening? The women, the Yazidi women, uh, were kidnapped. Uh, we're talking about more than 5,000 women, young women, in the age between 13 and 50, sometimes even 60 years old. They are segregated. The virgins are kept uh, apart, and the elderly women are also kept apart, and they're uh, sold with a different tariff. The virgins uh, in Mosul is sold for $150. 300 women have been sold in Syria for $300 uh, each. Our honor has been lost. We have been dishonored. It's a tragedy. When uh, some of these women carried their child in the womb when they were kidnapped, and eventually they've been taken away from their children. And I'm asking you, fathers and mothers in this room, what would happen to you if, they, if your children were took away from you and if you were kept segregated? We're talking about 700, 50, 100 from 5 to 10 years old, which are kept apart on their own. We don't know where they are. We don't know what happened with them. We received pictures from the inside of these homes with children who know nothing of life and who are held hostage. Which mother could stand this, could stand seeing his child taken away from his arms, not knowing what has happened to them? Their throats have probably been cut open. Their 
their children or probably the female children have been their daughters have been probably raped this is the reality these are the tragedies going on to the uh, Yazids in Iraq We spent 10 days uh, fleeing in the mountains with thirst and hunger. I've seen with my own eyes ch small children barefoot so with their feet bleeding because we've been uh, walking and fleeing for 40 hours in the mountains. I've seen children eating grass and leaves uh, because of hunger. I've, I've seen uh, children dying of thirst, uh, mothers abandoning their old children to save other children. I've known a woman who told me I had five children. Two of them were handicapped. I had to leave them in the mountains to save the other three. When I was in a plane, which eventually fell, a woman Oh, the pilot said uh, that, it, that, that there was too much weight, uh, so the, the plane couldn't fly, uh, couldn't fly because there were too many people. So a woman said to the pilot, take my two children, I stay on the mountain, go save them. This is our tragedy. So this is happening today. The Yazidis have abandoned their houses in Jazar. We arrived in Kurdistan, Ruruk, Erbil, and thanks God, there at least we found water, something to drink. Kurdistan government helped us as they could, but Kurdistan government cannot do everything. The people of Yahuk helped us, and we were so thankful to them. They didn't make distinctions between Yazidis and the Muslims. They gave us the feathers and gave us water. They, um, they welcomed us in our homes. But this is not enough. I'm speaking here to you, not as a politician, not as an MP, but as a human being, as a, of a, a Yazidis uh, faith. I don't know how many people were here, but maybe some of you, all of you, can just say something to uh, affect, uh, to change things. You're going to say 10 words, another one is going to say 10 words. We're going to come to 100 words, 1,000 words. Who maybe can influence decision makers. We need our land back, which have been taken us from unjustly. We still don't understand why. So I'm asking you, help us uh, with food, water, because uh, without this, what can we do? A woman came to me uh, and told me I had five children. Three daughters have been taken by ISIS and sold in, uh, in uh, Syria. So I have other two daughters. What shall I do with them? I didn't know what to tell her. You're all mothers and fathers. Who could stand his daughter to be kidnapped, sold, and eventually raped? That's why I'm asking you just one thing. You can uh, help us. Each of you can help us. Um, we're asking the governments uh, to set free our kidnapped women. We want to go back home, but we want to go back protected. We cannot imagine going back with the people being there. Our neighbors are killing us. So we want protection. We want to be armed. We ask in the strong countries, so we talk about democracy, who have the mouth full of words like democracies, women's rights, children's rights. Where are these countries? Oh, and where are these rights? We're talking about genocide here in the 21st century. So we need protection. We want our daughters back. We want our land back. We want the help of the government of Kurdistan so that we can turn a page. So i asking you to help us as well uh, to and i want you to consider what this is being this is happening a genocide eventually i can imagine 
that all of you with you humanity can lend a hand to me and tell me I'm with you in this fight. Thank you. What can you say? What can you add to these words of Viana? Words uh, which come uh, from the heart and tell us that innocent people are dying. Thank you, Viana, because uh, with your words, you describe the horrors of war. Yes, war is an horror. There is no nice war. Peace is nice, yes. All the words, the minister before and was speaking about Alapsha, I still have in my mind the horrible pictures of those years. This land of Iraq, of Kurdistan, where all these wars have taken place from 1998 till today, till the images described by Vian. War is always terrible and calls for more war and takes the worst out of man. And these uh, words of Vian really describe uh, this, uh, this horrible acts of man. A Christian wise man says that beauty will save the world. This uh, holds us together, I believe, uh, if we're looking for a future for Iraq. Uh, thank you again, Vian, for your words and for the, uh, the plea for solidarity, uh, which touches us all. <laughs>